When it comes to new construction homes, it's no secret that I am a huge fan of trying to help clients get into new construction homes. But today, here's what I wanna do. I wanna tell you 10 things that you probably didn't know or things that people don't tell you about buying a new construction home. I wanna, let's talk about these things and, and make sure, you know, to see, hey, is new construction a right fit for you? And hopefully by the end of these 10 things, you know whether yes or no, that this is the direction you wanna go and we're gonna make it happen. So let's go, hit it. One, uh, you have to ask the question, hey, what is included? Regardless of the builder, you know, every builder has different things that they include that are standard features. Ask about the landscaping. Do I get bushes or flowers or am I getting one tree or two trees? Do I have an irrigation system? Is it on the front and the backside? We live here in Texas. On that irrigation system, we want to know, do I have a foundation drip line? Which means, do I have a, you know, a line running around my foundation so that I can drip into that and keep that retaining moisture during the summer when it gets freaking hot here. Those are questions to ask. Also, we wanna ask, hey, like when it comes to packages, what what is standard versus what is an upgrade? What, How much do I get to pick? Do I get to pick everything individually? Am I buying a home that everything is already picked for me and you know there's, there's no customization and I, Am I buying on you know a lower end where, hey, if this is the model and everything's the same and it's cookie cutter? So just ask those questions. What's included? What's not included? What's an upgrade? Those are the big things to ask. So that leads us into our second one is your home is not going to look like a model home. I know it's shocking, but the model is exactly that. It's a model. And if it's a model, every single builder in all of creation for all of time is going to do everything they can to put their best foot forward. So you walk into these model homes and trust me, I walk into a ton and you're just like, wow, that home is beautiful. And you see all these accent walls and you see, you know, these upgraded lighting fixtures and you see everything you could think of and you're like, oh, this is really cool. And then they walk you into another home and you're like, this, um, this doesn't look like my house. Like this doesn't look like the same thing. So just be aware of that, you know, depending on the builder and the packages, you know, the home is not gonna look like the model home unless you end up lucky enough to buy a model home, which is, you know, is available in certain times and things like that. But also know that like walking into an empty home that is just, you know, whether it's done or almost done, it's gonna feel weird. It's gonna feel small until you start putting furniture in there. And so it, it, it's kind of hard to visualize. So just know that that's kind of the second thing when, you know, when you're talking about new construction is, hey, just, just be mindful that what you see in a model versus what you see in your finished product, they're gonna be similar, but you're definitely gonna feel the difference between the two of those. Number three is the HOA. I have yet to find a new construction community that's being built that does not have some sort of HOA. So most of these new communities have have an HOA, uh, which means you're getting, you know, builders and developers are putting in amenity centers, pools, fitness trails, walking trails, dog parks, tennis courts. I mean, you name it, we've seen all kinds of different things. So you wanna ask the question, hey, what what is, again, it's similar to the builder, what is included in the HOA uh, and how much are my dues gonna be and what are the restrictions and what can I do? What can't I do? You wanna know those things ahead of time. The last thing I want you to do is, is get caught off guard and you're like, oh, I didn't wanna live in an HOA. And it's like, well, if you didn't wanna live in an HOA, we probably shouldn't be looking at new construction builds. You know, I think ours, I think is something like seven or $800 for the year. So this leads us into number four as part of, you know, pricey and things that we're paying for. A lot of new communities, what we have to ask for is when it comes to the taxes, we have to ask about a MUD or a PID. So a PID, public utility district or municipal utility district. So basically what those come down to is their taxes. So if you're in this development that was previously dirt and you know open field, the developer comes in and they put in roads and street lights and fire hydrants and curbs and sidewalks and all of those things, well somebody has to pay for those. Like normal, you know, those get passed along to the residents. That is what's called a mud and a pit tax. A lot of those new communities have those. Not every single one has them. Our community, for example, we don't have a mud or a pit, which is part of why we chose to live out here. But again, that that's something if you don't know to ask about it, you got to make sure you ask what's the mud, what's the pit, and how is that going to affect our tax rate? Speaking of taxes, the other, the other important things, we're still on number four, is you have to know on the first year of owning your home, you're only going to pay taxes on the unimproved land which means the county, wherever that home sits, they're taxing based on the value of the land and the land alone. And so you're gonna see that tax number and it's gonna be really low. It's probably gonna be sub $100,000 depending on 
uh, where you're buying. And then what's gonna happen is the second year of you owning that home, they're gonna say, oh, wait a minute, you built a structure, we have to tax for the land versus plus the value of the structure. And if you're not careful and, you, and you're caught off guard, uh, your tax bill is going to skyrocket and it's not gonna be fun. So if, you know, just be mindful that that's gonna happen. Number five, uh, let's talk affordability. I, again, I, I'm a fan of new construction, but we have to have the honest conversation about affordability. You know, everybody wants the, the allure and the excitement of something new and that shiny object, right? And while I will tell you there's a ton of new construction happening all over DFW, not all of it is equal. Uh, not all of it is the same and prices are gonna fluctuate depending on where you're at. You know, it's interesting to look at these larger builders that are building uh, several communities and you kind of look through their websites and you see, you know, similar floor plans. And it's like, well, in one community, that floor plan may start at 350. Well, in another community, because of location, that floor plan starts at 420. And you're like, well, wait a minute, it's the same house. Yeah, it all depends on, you know, it's the old saying, location, location, location. So in terms of affordability, the thing you have to think about is as Dallas as a whole is the Metroplex is growing. It's growing in all the different directions, north, south, east, west, we're growing everywhere. Um, but there are some areas that are growing more rapidly than others um, that are becoming more expensive than others very quickly. And so a house in Roy City out here where we live that might cost you, you know, 350 to, to 400 in, you know, Prosper is gonna cost you 600 for basically more or less the same house. So that, that's something to think about in terms of affordability. Also, one of the things you, in light of that as well, uh, if you're planning on being one of the, if you work in you know downtown, uptown, Dallas proper, just know if you're wanting affordability, you're probably going to have a commute somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour. That three, you know, 320, 330 to about 450 price point, uh, you're gonna have to get on the outskirts a little bit. I mean, it is available, don't get me wrong. There, there are homes available that were, that are happening in that price point. You're just gonna like, if you're, but if you're gonna work close to Dallas or things like that, just know you're gonna to have to drive. So that's kind of one of those trade-offs that we have to talk about. There is still affordable new construction. We, you just gotta look and you're gonna to have to be willing to make some trade-offs based on location uh, if you need to drive. So just be mindful of that. Number six is cost versus an existing home. So this one's kind of a hard one, but I think it's important for us to kind of talk through and flesh out and it'll kind of lead into our, our other ones as well. Typically, most of the most of the time, when it comes to new construction cost, like the, the, the price you see on the paper versus uh, resale, new construction is gonna be higher. Resale, you know, there, it's it's gonna be a little bit lower. Some say between 15, 15 to 20% on the, the like cost you see, like the, the number that you see listed on, you know, MLS or Zillow, if you choose to look there or whatever. But that number, like that's only one piece of the story. There's so much more that goes into that. And it's just one of those things to be mindful of that buying the $450,000 house on, that's a resale house might actually end up being more expensive than the $490,000 new construction house because of incentives and the way that those things are built out. If you're wanting more house for the, your money, definitely the way to go is resale. Just to be honest, it's there, there's more there's more mature trees, there's the potential you know, for pools, outdoor spaces, more larger lots in, in established neighborhoods. A resale home is not, is not a bad deal, um, but what you have to remember on a resale home is that is somebody's home. Uh, there is an emotional attachment to that home. There is stories and family that have been built in that home and you know people have this expectation of what their things are worth and it's not a bad thing it's just a thing to be mindful of whereas on a new construction side that home is a number on a spreadsheet it is home 764a in this development and it's a it's a math equation for them right so and there's a ton that goes into that it's like hey when did they buy the lumber did they buy it you know when lumber was at, skyrocketed at 400 percent did they get a deal there's so much that goes so much more that goes into that on the builder side to to be to think about that yes on paper it may look a little bit more expensive the bang for the buck if you're wanting more house is on the resale side so it's just something to think about as you know, cost of new versus existing. Number seven. So people look at new construction and it's like, you know, I can tell you, hey, there are builders that offer 15, 20, 25, $30,000 in incentives plus a $10,000 gift card. Yeah, that's a real thing happening right now. We can we can talk about that. Uh, or interest rate buy downs and you're like, well, how in the world, like how can they do that and still make money? Well, it goes back to what we were talking about previously. 
That home is a number on a spreadsheet and you know, they're building out entire neighborhoods. So the 15, 20, 50 homes and it, and it all depends on when they started that build, right? And how much money they've got in that build and how much, cause let's be real, the builders have margin. Like they're in this to make money and the way they make money is buy low, sell high and you know, you make the money in the middle. So also most builders either own or have a deep partnership with mortgage lenders and title companies. So then, so when you start seeing all these advertisements of like, oh, hey, we've got $20,000 for you to spend your way. Well, then when we dig into it, it's like, okay, it's 10,000 from the builder, it's 5,000 from the title company, and it's $5,000 from the lender. So yes, it is $20,000 that goes toward closing costs, interest rate buy down, price reduction, which side note, unless you're paying full cash, don't use it for a price reduction, use it for interest rate, closing costs, that would just be mine side tidbit. Um, so that's how they're able to do that is they have that margin built in. Uh, they're building, you know, tons of homes in the neighborhood. So it's like we can sell this one for a little bit less because we sold that one for a little bit more. And so you've got all of these things that kind of play into that of how, how they can do so many incentives. Because the other thing builders are trying to do is like they're not what they're wanting to do. Um, they're not trying to tank prices They're So what you're not going to you'll see some price reductions, but a builder would much rather give you a incentive than just a straight price reduction on paper for a couple different reasons. One, um, it helps make them look better. Two, uh, they can like those incentives and things like that can kind of get hidden in those costs. So it, it still looks like they're selling at a higher end, which benefits them. It also benefits other homeowners in the neighborhood. For example, so like we bought in phase one of a community or like the first phase of a new construction of a community. Uh, and we bought at one price and prices have gone up. Well, the natural ex expectation is of course, the longer that they build in the community, the higher the price goes, right? Well, so what we don't want is like, they don't want me as a homeowner saying, oh, well, y'all you know, are undercutting my value and I'm trying to sell. And so like the, that's where they're padding in those, those incentives, right? So like you'll still see the, the higher price, but you're getting incentive in you know, terms of interest rate, closing costs, gift cards, blinds, gutters, uh, washers and dryers, things like that. That's, that's where that's built in. Next one, thing you need to know about uh, new construction is do I need a realtor? Technically, no, you don't need me. You don't have to have somebody when you walk into a new com construction community, but here's the thing, you're not going to save the money of not having a realtor. Like the builder's not gonna say, oh, you don't have a realtor? Well, here, let me give you some more money. That's not how it works. Because the realtor is paid by the builder on your behalf. So paying me to represent you uh, is built into their marketing budget. It's part of, again, going back to the margin, it's built in for that. So why you need a realtor? You need somebody that understands, hey, the quality of that builder, what's good, what's bad, the questions that you should ask. You want somebody that walks in and out of those communities and knows to ask about, hey, can I pull my fence forward? Hey, what kind of insulation are we getting? Hey, can we add sinks here? Hey, what, you know, you want somebody that knows those things and can ask those things. You also want somebody that has a relationship with those builders that can leverage their relationship to potentially save you even more money, right? Because for you, you're gonna be one and done and the builders, you know, they're gonna move on. For me, those builders are gonna to continue to see me because I have a reputation with them and I, they want me to continue to bring clients to them. Uh, so the benefit of having a realtor is having somebody that A, works on your behalf, again, as nice as our salespeople are, and I have tons of great relationships with lots of salespeople, they don't work for you. They work for their builder. Your realtor works for you. That's, that's the most important thing. You want somebody working for you, advocating for you, that can, that can help you throughout that process, answer any questions, make sure things stay on target. And also you want somebody, so perfect example, uh, have a client closing on a home here at the end of the week. We actually just got a phone call at the end of last week that our builder and our sales rep have been, that were no longer with the company. And so they're having to scramble to get somebody in to catch up on get us caught up as quick as possible and get up to speed. Well, if, the, if my clients didn't have me who had been following along with their process, they would be in a world of hurt. I mean, granted, it's still a little bit complicated, but having somebody that knows what's going on and can kind of help get everybody up to speed and keep everything on track is a benefit because it is surprising. You would be surprised how quickly um, sometimes sales reps and builders and things like turnover in communities, whether they go to a different builder or the builder moves them to another community or whatever, like that happens very, very quickly and it happens more often than you think. It is very, very rare that the salesperson and the builder that starts a community 
like from phase one is the person that finishes the community at the very end. It happens, but it's rare. Like I said, so you, as you need a realtor that is going to advocate and be in your corner, know what's going on. And the builder pays for me to work with you. So it all works out. Let's talk about lot size uh, and we're, and we're almost done. So most people are shocked to find out when they go walk into a new construction community, how small those lots are. Uh, a lot of builders now are building 40, 50, 60, foot lots and you look at that and so basically that's like across the front of your house it's like 40 feet across and then another house uh, which means you start getting narrow houses and you start getting houses that are really close together builders do that because they started realizing hey we can cram more houses in which means we can make more money so that's just something to be mindful of when it comes to new construction there are communities again we bought on a 70 foot lot and, and i think you know we're close but we're not like super close so that is you know if you're thinking new construction versus resale and you're wanting more space and you're not wanting to spend more money, resale would be the way to go. But just be mindful, like those, those houses are gonna, unless you're in bigger community, and even then in some of those communities, it's like they're spending 50 foot lots and they're putting $600,000 homes on those, which to me is absolutely bonkers. But obviously people are buying them for one reason or another. But if I'm spending that kind of money, personally, I want a little bit of space. So just again, something to know that if you, 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 know, you don't know it and you're surprised going in, you will be kind of shocked. And last but not least, Thing you need to know about building new construction, how to get the most savings. It's really simple. Uh, we work together. Uh, again, I work here in the DFW marketplace. My name is Zach. I help families all over buy, sell, build new construction. Again, it's one of the things that I love to do the most uh, is walk you through the process of new construction homes, answer any questions and support you along the way. And I promise you, I do everything I can to leverage myself and my relationships to get you into those homes and take care of you any way that I can. Uh, to help you save the most money, make it a really enjoyable experience. So that's the, that's the thing you need to know when it comes to new construction. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if I can be helpful in any way, my contact information is gonna be right here. They're gonna put it on the bottom of the screen. Uh, in the description down below, you can find, again, all my contact information. You can book yourself directly into my calendar. You can browse homes. Whatever I can do to be helpful, here for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, leave me a comment, hit that like button. It helps, you know, helps get this out to other people that we can help along the way. So, so excited for you. We'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.